Let's take a look at this six foot six junior forward out of Colorado State, David Roddy, a young man who shot 41% from three this past season. And I do want to make note, shot 68% from the free throw line. I know free throw shooting is a huge indicator of shooting for a lot of people. And those numbers were flipped actually as a sophomore, 28% from the three point line, but a better 78% from the free throw line. He was 40% in catch and shoot and these pick and pop situations. And I really want to make note of the pick and pop because I do think that's a play type that he's going to be utilized a lot in the NBA. Not a whole lot else in the three-point shooting. He did do this a little bit stepping behind. Every once in a while, if he could get like a rhythm dribble, he was able to knock those down. But not a lot of movement shooting in terms of like transition trailer. He took a few of these that I saw and they didn't necessarily look good. And then definitely not coming off screens or really tough step back stuff off the dribble like you'll see at the end of this one. Again, this is not something that I plan on him doing in the NBA. I really think, as I'll go through this breakdown, that his best play types are going to be pick and pop, catch and shoot, catch and drive, but I did just want to show those as well. I do have some questions in the mid-range about his efficiency. He was 11 to 28, just 39%, but again, I think one thing he can be decent at and showed was a catch and drive. He likes to turn his back and turn it into a little mid post. We'll talk about that. But this little fall away right there, he did that a couple times and it looked pretty smooth. So maybe that is something he can do. But I think it's important for him to have that just to have something else in his repertoire. And then just the scoring in general. So he's not going to be an isolation guy. He's not going to attack you that way, as you can imagine. But again, that's not going to be his play types in the NBA. He loves going to this mid post and he did it a lot. It was 25% of his play types. It was the only play type that was over 10%. And he only scored it at 48% around the rim. He was actually 61% around the rim in totality on 223 attempts. But this was his most used play type. I don't think it's something that's going to translate to the NBA. They ran this type of action for him a lot. I like this one, actually. He catches and makes an immediate move to go score. I just wanted to show it because it was a huge part of his college game. But again, where I think he's going to be best, pick and pop like he does here. And I think he's got to be able to drive it. So on this one against Boise State, I think he's created the advantage. I would have liked to see him continue to attack into the lane. You can almost see him again, reverting back to wanting to go to kind of that mid post, turn his back. I think that may be a habit he has to break just a little bit. He did score at 61% around the rim, but I do think there's some room for improvement. Tries to play through some contact there, isn't able to finish, but you see him get all the way to the lane and he showed a lot of clips. So in transition here, he's able to attack, go behind the back, not a huge vertical pop guy. He does have a seven foot wingspan, but able to finish through contact there at the rim. And then against Boise State, he really loves his spin move and it is kind of aggressive and violent. I really like it. And then the nice lefty finish on that side of the basket. And then he really loves this move here. He's going to catch again. So like driving kicks to him and then somebody's closing out shot fake right foot jab go to his left and then this just like slow down powerful euro step again we can talk whether we think that's going to translate against nba defenders but again 61 percent around the rim on a quite a few attempts and then in transition and cutting he actually finished at a very high level as well had really good point per possession in those and then one final way that maybe he can help a team scoring offensive rebounding again he's not going to be a high riser but he averaged almost two offensive rebounds a game. I think he's going to be able to bully people, use that frame, use that body to get in there and give himself opportunities and his team opportunities for a second chance. Now let's look at his passing. And I'm not sure I'm quite as sold on his passing as other people are. He did average 2.8 assists a game, but he also averaged 2.4 turnovers a game. Let's start with the good. Again, working out of the mid post where he was really comfortable, makes a nice read to the weak side. His teammate misses this one, but throws that one with velocity. But this is the one I really like. Again, pick and pop, able to attack the closeout. He's going to go by here forces help from the secondary defender, and then makes the nice read. Now, his teammate wanted the lob, maybe something he will improve on, gets used to playing with NBA-level athletes, but he makes the right read there, ends up getting an open shot for his team. One thing I would have liked to see more of is him as a pick-and-roll roll man. Only had seven field goal attempts. Didn't see any possessions where I was able to see whether he was a short-roll passer. So 
I didn't have any direct correlations with that or any film to take from that. I do like this one here where he makes a catch in a quick decision. So like that's as close as I can get to a correlation here. It's not definitely not one to one, but is able to catch, read the defense quickly, get the ball of his hands with the right hand hook pass to his teammate who knocks down the shot. So I'm very interested to see what development and abilities he'll have as a short roll roll man. But again, 2.4 turnover. So it's not like he was always making the right read. Sometimes he tried to thread the needle a little too much. Sometimes he made the completely wrong read like he does there. And even here, you see again, a drive turn in kind of post up and then makes the wrong read, tries to force a pass. So I do have some questions. I'm not 100% sold on the passing of David Roddy. Let's move to the defensive end. We're going to start on ball. And I just think in general, he's going to be a good team defender. So defending ball screens, he did a lot more drop coverage than what I anticipated seeing. I do worry if he does that at the NBA level, is he going to be able to contest the passes and the shots in those situations but what I saw he was actually very good and I really like this part here at the end so he's going to drop he's going to drop his teammate never gets back in front so he ends up taking the ball able to move his feet and stay in front and ends up forcing a turnover so I thought he did a really good job on that rep here's what I'm talking about with the team defense they're going to ice this screen which means you want to keep it on the sideline you see his teammate here is kind of in drop but it's on the opposite side of the screen the face of the screen and you're going to keep the ball sideline. And you see that a lot, but then he's able to stay in front. But you'll see him a lot execute the game plan of his team. We'll see it again here. They were a team that forced hard baseline knowing that their help was there. So on ball, he forces it to the baseline, and then he keeps it baseline, forcing the offensive player to give it up. So I do think he's a really good team defender in that way, even on ball, knowing where his help is going to be at, and that is important. And then just does a good job here, staying in front, contesting, uses body, and then defensive rebounds. He averaged five and a half a game. Not going to be a high riser, but he's going to use his body. He's going to push people out of the way, and he's going to be able to come up with defensive rebounds in that way. Now, with that said, I think there's definitely some fair questions about his perimeter defense. Is he going to be able to guard out there? Is he going to be switchable? I know that's a thing that's going to come up a lot with David Roddy. So these next three possessions, I tried to look at if this was an NBA player, how would this possession have ended? So this first one, just a rip through and go. Immediately, I feel like the offensive player has an advantage. Roddy's hips are turned. To his credit, you'll see him continue to play on all these possessions. Doesn't just give up a complete blow by, but as an NBA player, player able to take advantage of that and go ahead and score same one here against Boise State rip through go now Roddy again continues to play he's going to use that frame and that strength to body the offensive player we'll talk about that in just a second but as an NBA player a big wing um, a guard able to attack those and go ahead and score in those situations and then you'll see it here against St. Mary's so he stays in front he's going to work gets leaning a little bit and then now he gets his hands on and he gets called for a foul he wasn't in foul trouble a lot but it did happen a little bit in those situations so I'm not saying he can't do it I'm just saying I'm not completely sold on it now looking at the complete opposite side of that can he guard fives and what I think you're going to see is something similar where he's going to work, he's going to give multiple efforts, he's going to use his strength and his frame to stay between the offensive player and the basket, not get buried, and contest the best he can. But again, he's only 6'6". Even with the 7-foot wingspan, he's going to contest, but how disruptive is he going to be against 6'10 players, against 7-footers in the NBA? Really love this rep here. Moves his feet, stays in front passes out it comes back again he's not going to give up a bunch of ground he's not just going to get bullied into the paint he's going to contest this one he forces the miss but I do think there's a chance he gives up some buckets just because he doesn't just have that height that leaping ability to block those shots in those situations and then one final one I don't think he's going to be in this situation a lot and this will help transition into off the ball but just getting through screens navigating screens I've talked about the frame and the strength and that holds up well guarding the post even even on dribble drives at times, but not always great when you're trying to navigate screens. He didn't have to do it a bunch. Again, I don't think he's going to have to do it a ton in the NBA, but if he's going to guard some wings, get switched out in the guards, it might happen at times. And then off the ball, it's the same thing I've already talked about. High basketball IQ, I think he can be a part of and execute a really good scouting report or game plan. So again, remember Colorado State forces baseline. 
I really like that he doesn't go too early. As soon as the offensive player put it on the ground, now he comes though. He's there where he's supposed to be, when he's supposed to be there. And I think that's really, really important in off-ball defense. And then this, the communication, again, contributing to a team defensive concept. Tells his teammate what they're doing. Looks like they're trying to ice the ball screen like we talked about earlier. He helps as the offensive player rolls. He doesn't force the turnover here, but he got guys in the right position and communicated with them to do so. I just think he's a very good help defender. You see him do it there, gets back to his man, kind of stunts at the ball handler, and then he goes in again to grab a defensive rebound. 5.5 a game this past season in those situations. I really love this clip here. He's the low man on the weak side, so he's supposed to tag the roll guy. I think sometimes what guys will do is they'll overcommit. So he puts himself in a really good position here, which is important. Positioning will be important for him, but he doesn't overcommit. He reads the ball handler, and the ball handler is committed to throwing the pass here. He's probably reading his eyes, and he's already moving, anticipating that pass. And what that helps him do is it's not quite as hard of a closeout for David Roddy where he struggles. Even with that, you see him give up that drive a little bit. Like we talked about earlier, that he continues to make efforts and he gets back in front, makes it a tough contested shot, but he's not always going to just give up no drive whatsoever. And then here, he's going to help the helper. And to me, it wasn't a much about taking this pass away, but do you rotate and get this box out? And I think that's one thing he will definitely do. Really good defensive rebounder in terms of he's at least going to go box you out. You may out jump him, but he's going to rotate like he does there. And if the shot would have got up on the rim, he's going to have this guy boxed out like his team needs him to do. Again, I don't. he's not a great individual defender. He's not going to do it by himself. He's not just going to change the landscape, but I think he can be a part of a good team defense. And then finally, I don't know that I believe in the rim protection. He averaged just over a block per game last season. I don't think that as the low man, you see him not able to get up and get this one. I'm not sure that's going to be something he does at a high level. May he get one here and there? Sure, but I don't think he's just going to be a game changer in any way in terms of blocking shots.